We've talked about strange and unusual roller coasters before on this channel, but there are a lot more of these rides out there. These coasters are truly bizarre creations that just go to show how inventive some manufacturers are. So as voted on by the viewers, here are just 10 of the weirdest kinds of roller coasters you can find. Number 10, the Elevator Lift Mini Coaster, made by Brazilian manufacturer Radar Play. If your local Chuck E. Cheese has installed a roller coaster, it would look like this. This tiny coaster can only be found at family buffet centers in Brazil, and is certainly one of the most compact coaster models ever created. Often situated among ball pits and trampolines, this coaster features minuscule ride vehicles with a clear plastic windshield covering the top. The windshield likely serves to prevent kids from sticking their hands out of the vehicles as it traverses the tight course. The extremely compact course consists of an elevator lift immediately followed by a simple downward helix. Though it's a short ride, these coasters are often fitted with impressive scenic elements like plastic plastic plants, and even a tunnel. While it's mainly targeted to young children, adults are allowed to ride, so those of you credit seekers can easily add this coaster to your list. Number 9, the Gyro Flyer, made by Dutch manufacturer Caripro. Shortly before going under, Caripro was well known for their single rail suspended coasters, including the defunct Scooby's Ghoster Coaster at King's Island. However, this wasn't the only suspended single rail coaster this company made. A much rarer model was the Gyro Flyer, which only exists at Germany's Skyline park. Unlike the Bat Flyer, this coaster sits four people per ride vehicle. Passengers face towards each other around the center of the gondola as the seats spin around the center axis. All the while, the vehicles traverse the downwards course on a single rail track. To this day, it remains the only suspended spinning coaster ever built, as the trains have the ability to sway with the track's turns. Though it's an interesting concept, Kari Pro unfortunately went bankrupt soon after this coaster was made, so if you want to check out a suspended spinning coaster, you'll have to book a ticket to Germany. Number 8, the Cycle Coaster, made by Japanese manufacturer Senyo Kogyo. Some coasters have track under the trains, some have the track above the trains, but only one has track in both places. Introducing Senyo Kogyo Cycle Coaster. This strange attraction surrounds passengers in a steel pipeline of track similar to the Togo Ultra Twister. Unlike that coaster though, this is a much tamer ride, featuring smaller drops and no inversions. The circular track structure is used to support rails both above and below the trains. Though it's a short and relatively mild coaster, those who have ridden it have praised its unique and overall enjoyable ride experience. Notable enthusiast Richard Bannister said, Despite its brevity, the experience is surprisingly fun for what it is. Not much else is known about this coaster, except at one point, the trains were much bigger and bulkier, featuring windows and a roof. However, the trains have since been changed to a more open style. It's nothing too exciting, but the unique track system really does make it stand out. Number 7, the Swinging Coaster, made by French manufacturer Reverchon. Also known as the Drifting Coaster, this is one of the many inventive coasters to come out in recent years. Years after filing for bankruptcy, the fine folks at Reverchon made their comeback with this new attraction in 2016. This is a traveling fair ride that currently tours with showman FTE Ahrend. Now you've probably heard of a typical wild mouse coaster. These common rides take sharp, unbanked turns giving the illusion that passengers are about to fly off the track. Well imagine taking one of those rides and adding the ability to swing riders side to side. The swinging coaster uses the lateral force of its turns to swing the seats left and right. With every turn, the seats swing in the opposite direction. When the track goes left, you swing right, and vice versa. You also have the option of riding forwards or backwards. Though reviews among enthusiasts have been mixed, it's quite an inventive ride experience, and it just goes to show how there's still room for innovation when it comes to roller coasters. If you're interested in checking this ride out for yourself, you can do so at Basel, Switzerland's Autumn Fair, as it's currently running there until November 11th. Number 6, The Ring of Fire, made by an unknown Pakistani manufacturer. This is not only one of the most bizarre roller coasters in existence, but one of the most mysterious as well. This coaster consists of a single loop and close closely resembles the Superloop by American manufacturer Larson International. Though it's often marketed as a coaster, the Larson Superloop doesn't utilize gravity, so it's technically considered to be a flat ride. Pakistan's Ring of Fire, on the other hand, does use gravity. After the train is very slowly lifted to the top of the loop, it is then released, and gravity sends it downwards. The train then rocks back and forth on the track until the ride operator steps in to stop the ride with his bare hands. Yes, there were reportedly no no brakes on this ride, and the operator would have to grab onto the moving vehicle to 
stop it. You can see why this coaster didn't catch on. Despite getting a thumbs up from its riders, this ride would close just after a few years of operation, allegedly due to safety concerns. It's unknown if any incidents happened on this ride, but thanks to YouTube user Muhammad Yasir, its strangeness will forever be documented for enthusiasts to scratch their heads at. Number 5. The Kamikaze, made by French manufacturer Tosne. This is another mysterious roller coaster that only a few photos and videos exist of. The ride reportedly only operated in the early 90s, showing up at several fun fairs across France. The coaster consists of what appears to be a tire launch between two large loops. As the trains launch back and forth, they slowly gain momentum. The two loops are directly connected together, and beyond each loop is an inverted section of track that connects the entire circuit. The trains continue to pick up speed until they can complete the entire course. The modern day equivalent would be the Skyline Skywarp. However, when it comes to hang time, this coaster absolutely creams the Skywarp, as it actually traverses that relatively long section of inverted track. It's unknown why this ride was discontinued, and there isn't a lot of information about it, but it's without a doubt a memorably strange roller coaster that we're lucky to have documented. Number 4. The Toboggan, made by American manufacturer Chance Rides. From the manufacturer of the famous Zipper Carnival ride comes this portable vintage coaster. First produced in 1969, this ride is about as old as the moon landing. It was designed by a man named Walter House, who also designed Larson's famous Superloop ride. The toboggan was designed to be easily transported between carnivals. Nevertheless, this didn't stop permanent amusement parks from installing these attractions, and at one point, there were two of them operating at Pennsylvania's Hershey Park. The unusual ride experience started off with passengers boarding boot-shaped enclosed vehicles that resembled those found on the Chance Skydiver. Passengers then enter a revolutionary vertical chain lift up a tunnel. Long before the Gerstlauer Eurofighters of today, this was in fact the first roller coaster to feature such a lift. After the tunnel, riders enter a long downward spiral that circles around the lift. Immediately following this long helix, the trains maneuver a short track section with a few small turns and dips before the ride ends. Back in the day, this ride's portability combined with its relatively low price tag made it very popular among amusement parks. However, since the mid-1970s, Chance ceased production on the toboggan. As parks continued to evolve their coaster lineups, they didn't see the need for such a small and arguably clunky roller coaster. So as spare parts and demand lessened, the toboggan began phasing out. To this day, only one permanent installation is operating at Wisconsin's Little America, now known as the Wild and Woolly Toboggan. You can also find a few still operating at traveling fairs, such as this one in France. Number 3. The Catapult, made by German manufacturer Schwarzkopf. Though no longer in business, Schwarzkopf is still remembered for their incredible attractions to this day. Their looping coasters still stand out as forceful rides, and their simple shuttle loops pave the way for the modern launch coasters of today. However, one Schwarzkopf ride that's often forgotten about is their Catapult Coaster. In the early 1980s, the company set out to create a new portable roller coaster. Their goal was to make a looping coaster as small as possible for easy transport and installation at small fairs. Their solution was apparently taking their standard shuttle loop model and connecting both ends of the track together in a circular layout. Since the loop was the highest point of the track, drive tires were set up along the ride's layout in order to send the trains through the loop. These tires can send the train both forwards and backwards, allowing for a more varied ride experience. The only part of the ride that isn't powered by the tires is the top of the loop which the trains would complete on their own momentum. This unpowered section of track officially classifies the ride as a roller coaster. Like the Chance Toboggan, this portable coaster was also installed at a few amusement parks, though none are currently in operation. The only one left standing is Death Train at Oman's Mara Land, though it is still said to be closed down. If you got a chance to ride one of these, consider it a rare and noteworthy credit. Number 2. The Diesel-Powered Coaster, made by Italian manufacturer SC Italy. Diesel fuel is known for powering trucks and buses, but roller coasters? Yes, one Italian manufacturer decided to put a diesel engine on a coaster. Ordinary powered coasters use electricity to power the trains through the course, but this bizarre coaster goes in an entirely different direction. In order to operate the ride's built-in diesel engine, a ride operator must sit in the front car, using what looks like a stick shift to send the ride forwards. It's clear to see that the need for diesel and onboard staff made the ride less than appealing to potential buyers, as SC Italy only sold two of these rides. One of these rides went to England's defunct Camelot theme park. There it would operate as Dragonflyer from 1987 all the way to the park's closure in 2012. Afterwards,
times, the train was relocated to another English park called Southport Pleasureland for decoration, but has since been removed. On the other hand, the first of these coasters is actually still operating. The ride is located at an amusement park in Algeria called Janat al Aham, still in operation after 35 years. It's pretty off-putting that the park allows the ride operator to smoke on the job, but if you can stand the smell of a diesel engine and cigarettes, this is another noteworthy credit. Number 1. The Screamin' Squirrel, made by American manufacturer s and Worldwide. No coaster concept has left more people scratching their heads than this one. Just look at this thing, it looks like something someone in Photoshop would make. Designed by s and Worldwide, the inspiration of this ride actually came from the common Wild Mouse coaster. As I've said before, this is a common attraction at amusement parks all over the world, taking guests on a short, symmetrical layout full of sudden switchback turns. One day, the fine folks at s and got the idea to take a standard Wild Mouse and essentially flip it on its side. So instead of switchback turns, passengers experience sharp, sudden inversions officially classified as saxophones. The name comes from the unusual saxophone shape the inversions have. For extended periods of time, riders hang upside down as they traverse the track before finally snapping back into an upright position. The name Screamin' Squirrel is also an homage to the Wild Mouse, using the name of another rodent. The ride promises insane hang time to park goers and was initially well received by consumers. According to Screamscape, schools took field trips to s and Worldwide's Utah facility, and students were able to take a ride on the prototype model. s and hoped to revolutionize the Wild Mouse, but unfortunately, it wasn't quite the hit they wanted it to be, as only three of these coasters were ever installed. The first one went to Italy's Gardel in 2005 where it operated as Sequoia Adventure. Unfortunately, riders didn't take kindly to the sudden snapping inversions and uncomfortable over-the-shoulder restraints. According to a 2013 internet poll, the coaster was labeled as the seventh worst coaster in the world, ranking below every Vacoma SLC and Ninja at Six Flags St. Louis. Though currently not in operation, the ride is reportedly set to reopen in 2019 with a new theme. Hopefully the ride experience will be better received by then. The next Scream and Squirrel named Man O' War went to China's mysterious island where it continues to operate to this day. This was actually the same Scream and Squirrel that operated at s and Worldwide's testing facility, as evidenced by the color scheme and the trains that still had Scream and Squirrel written on them. But in terms of complete and total strangeness, nothing compares to Afterburner at Russia's Wonder Island. This was an extended version of the coaster that included standard turns, and it is weird. At first glance, it doesn't even look like a real coaster. It looks more like some kind of giant abstract sculpture. This ride uses a series of brakes to safely send riders through the course, and it really had to be seen to be believed. However, this coaster was removed less than a decade after it opened, suggesting that it had quite a few issues. The fact that I spent so much time talking about this coaster makes it easy to see why it made the number one spot. And out of all the coasters on this list, this one takes the bizarre saxophone-shaped cake. Thanks for watching everyone, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. You can follow me on social media on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, or you can check out my website at ThemeParkCrazy.com. This is Theme Park Crazy, and I'll see you all next time.